I don't know how long it'll be because I'm left-handed and I like to use my hand. So, <laughs> um, and it's and then and it says, "Endless is your love, constant one, faithful river that cannot be stopped." So, when I started to really say, "Okay, Lord, what is it? What is the message you want for tonight?" He said, he gave me a a prophetic word. It was, I, I seem to be really flowing in words that day. I had one for Lou. The Lord gave me one for me, and he said, sit down, I'm not done yet. So <laughs> that was pretty cool. So I just want to read this over you. This is just the, the word of the Lord that he gave me. Favor builds you up in the storm and lights your way in the darkness. Favor unwinds the tightness you feel when the storms of life come. Favor is your great reward. It is that which helps you increase and build capacity to love, to be and do what I have destined for you to do before the foundation of the earth. Favor sings over you when you walk into a room. Favor on your life beckons others to come and drink from the wells of who you are. Favor is the flavor, the essence of you, your unique gifting and calling. It is this favor that makes your assignment uniquely yours. It is our favored fragrance from heaven that draws the ones God assigned to you for his purposes. For it is what you carry unique to you. This is what the people in your sphere of influence need. They may not even know it yet. Do not minimize or let go of what I'm saying. Like the cogs in the wheel, your, fa your flavored favor <laughs> is essential for this move that's coming of my spirit. It's for your city, it's for your region, your neighborhoods, your county, your nation, and the nations that I'm giving you. So go in the knowledge that you matter greatly, that your purpose has been determined, and you will fulfill my callings on your life. Like animals that mark their territory, so is your favored flavor marking your territory as you go. So I got a little tongue twisted with that one, but it was a deep guess how he gave it, so that's how I wrote it. Um, you know, there was a time in my life when I prayed for, uh, for favor. You know, Lord, um, I, I pray, uh, you know, for divine favor wherever I go. I, I would pray, um, I would say, thank you, Father, that your, your favor surrounds me as a shield. And, um, and, I, and I would say, thank you, Lord, for increasing me in wisdom and in favor. And frankly, I didn't have a real revelation of it. I just knew that that's what Jesus prayed. And I thought, if he prayed it, I'm going to pray it. So that's what I did. And so uh, tonight, I, I just want to take us through a little bit of what favor is and what favor is for you why it is, and why it's on you for other people. Um, what is favor? It's beauty and elegance. It's gracious kindness. It's good, it's pleasant, and agreeable. I, when I saw those words, I thought it went immediately to Esther, to the book of Esther. And Queen Esther was lovely. She was beautiful, full of grace, full of kindness, always gracious, and, and very humble. And she would go before the king and she'd say, if, if I have found favor in your sight, and if you are pleased with me, let, grant me the wish. And, you know, I, I swear, I, said, I guess that's how you say that. I don't really know. So if I botched it, I'm sorry. He said, 
well, yeah, you know, he got excited. He said, sure, I'll give you what you want, honey. I'll give you up to half of my kingdom. So that's favor. <laughs> Danny, Danny Silk says that favor is what captures your attention and those around you. Favor is where there is a wow response to what you do, and people are saying how amazing it is. And, you know, there, there are things that you do that are uniquely yours. And others go, wow, that's really awesome that you can do that. Um, favor, you know, it, he says that favor, it's how it impacts people. It's what God put all over us that invites others into a heaven-on-earth experience. It's a substance that's smeared all, smeared. <laughs> Think about that, smeared all over us, and others smell it. We feel God's pleasure when we do this. And you think to yourself, well, you know, I was created for this. This is, this is pretty cool. We are created for a life of astonishment at the good pleasure of our Father and his favor toward us. It is his promise to us. He declares his passions and the depths of his love for us. And he wants us to enjoy the pleasure of his favor upon us. And this is who he wants to be for you in every circumstance of your life. Every circumstance of your life. The good the bad, and the ugly. Favor is also an invitation uh, to follow him, and it will always be well with us. It's an invitation to lean into his heart for, he wants, for what he wants us to be, to do, to have in this life. Proverbs 3, 3 through 6 um, said, um, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. When we do this, when we trust, and we lean not into our own, unto our own understanding, that's favor. We're inviting ourselves up into heaven where, there's, where favor abounds. He so relentlessly pursues us with his passionate favor. And it's all the time. But we, we don't see it. And, you know, I had, a, I had a girl say to me yesterday, she said, gee, I wish I had favor. And I stopped her dead in her tracks. And I said, well, so you have your own business. And... Are you busy? Ah, oh, yeah, I'm so busy. So, you know, I have to work on Saturdays and yada, yada, yada. And I said, um, are you starving? Oh, no. And I said, do you have a happy marriage? Well, yes. And I said, honey, that's favor. <laughs> that's favor. That's God's favor. So it's almost like we have this you know, if, if we're not getting wowed all the time with favor, maybe God doesn't favor us. Not so. Not so. Favor is a specific preference, one to another, from one to another. It's advice given to benefit someone else. It's an indication of God's intentional bias where we're concerned that we are intentionally loved and unduly indulged and privileged. That's who you are. That's who we are. I don't know about you guys, but that just kind of excites me because there's, you know, there's, there's such a, a it, it's so profoundly real. And if we can catch and really get down in our spirits the reality of that. Um, you know, I, when, I, when I saw that, when I read that and, and looked at it, I thought, 
you know, he, he talks about how, you know, we're unduly loved and privileged and I thought, and indulged, and I thought, we're his chocolate. <laughs> so what makes, um, and, and, you know, the, uh, this invitation of who we are and how he indulges us, it, it becomes what we carry. So, you know, in the pre-Christian becomes thirsty because they see that we have something that they don't. We possess something that they don't have just yet. Um, favor with man is, is evidence that we are favored by God. And, our, and God's favor over us is always for our success. We do not pursue the favor with man, it, um, but we pursue him. It's the evidence of a life laid down in the pursuit of him. And God always says, in every situation, this is who I want you to be, or this is who I want to be for you in the situation and in the season of life that we find ourselves. It's a gift of heaven to open up possibilities to reach other people. Favor gets you in a room and the attention of others. They know they need what you have to say. And um, I, I, I marvel at um, my son. He's, uh, I don't know how big the space is that he lives in, but it's not very big. And he's with another, uh, I think, 84 men on his block. And... Um, Everywhere he goes, they listen. What was that commercial? Everywhere he goes, he says, you know, people just kind of come and hang around me. <laughs> he had no idea what it was all about. You know, and I said, well, that's because of the favor that God has for you in this place. He said, you know, people will sit down, you know, and they want to find out your story. What are you in here for? What are you in here for? And, you know, they have to be very careful about the kinds of things that they talk about. But at the end of every conversation, they'll go, dude, what are you doing here? You don't belong here. You're not like us. You're not like these people. What are you doing here? Um... Even the, even the supervisors and the correction officers, he wasn't supposed to have a job, and he got a job. Um, you know, I've had the people in visitation where he works call me and say, yeah, you coming to see your son this week? We want to get, make sure we get you on the list. I mean, that doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. That's favor. That's favor. You know, Graham Cook says that we're his beloved, and he has set his heart on you. He says, come and rest in me. I am with you wherever you go. If you're, he says, this is really cool. If your intention would match mine, you would know the depth of affection that God has for you. It's a special privilege, intentional bias of God towards you, and it is attracted favor to who you are. And when you walk into a room or wherever you find yourself, you have a divine advantage. It means we already have a level of esteem and approval of the heart of the Father regardless of where you are right now. He put us in one place that would guarantee that you are loved in Christ. He puts you in a place that guarantees your own anointing, no matter what. So that's where, it, where he places us, in places where that anointing, flows. And he does it. 
We think we do it. He does it. Yeah, in Christ we have the guarantee because he put it inside of us. It costs us nothing to get into Christ. But it will cost us everything to stay in that place. And it's a time of discovery. Um, it's a time to um, discover the scope of his love and his passion for us. It's not about performance. The Father responds to the Jesus in us and in you. Not what you do, not the performance of your life. We can escape his faithfulness, his favor, because we are in Jesus. He will never change his intention toward us. It has nothing to do with who we are, but who Christ is in us. And we are transformed, be transformed by the fact that he delights in you. His favor draws you to walk in a deeper dimension than we could ever imagine. He pushes you deeper into the place of receiving so that once received, he occupies that place in your heart. There's no more doubt, no more lack, no more fainting. When we get a deeper revelation of the amazing amount of favor we walk in, that's, again, where we're going to change New Bern, Craven County, the region, the state, and, uh, you know, the nation, and all the nations that he's given to us. And because of your individual flavor favor, you have been given... You know, like the cog in the wheel, you've been given an important part to play. He tells us to expect his favor, expect it. I used to say, oh God, oh God, oh God, I really, I've got all these kids with me and I really would like a parking place right up front. It never happened. <laughs> and I had to way down, you know, which was fine, a good exercise uh, <clears throat> and humbling. But, you know, now, wherever I go, and I, I, don't, I mean, it's just that I'm always parking at a spot that's pretty close. And I've kind of come to expect it, which is not arrogant. It's not arrogant. And, and I don't have the little handicap thing in my thing yet, so... I mean, it's just that it's his favor. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's pretty exciting. Anyway, um, you know, we, we find favor when we get into the scriptures, right? And, you know, God showing favor to people was, was all over, you know, the, all over the word. And it was all about our encounters or their encounters with an unchangeable God. So we're going to learn, we learn the nature of the Father. And as we learn and get that revelation deep in us, we're learning of the favor, the amount of favor that we're walking, walking in. You know, the scripture is your story of who you are and where you are right now. I like that. Because we can go to Scripture and identify who we are, where we are right now. Because, you know, the, you read a path. I know all of you probably have a life verse that, you know, you were reading the Scriptures one day and this passage jumped off the page. And that be, kind of became your life verse. That's favor. Because that was Father gently showing you his heart for you in that moment. It's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, it's a story of how he sees you and how he wants to make connection with you. Um, and he just, he just loves us so much and he wants to speak to us. And, and uh, one thing is for sure, 
And uh, most of you know I have a counseling practice. And um, I really, you know, my heart is for every person to understand that God only sees us through the positive. He does not see us through the negative. That's usually life, circumstances, people that give us that mindset. You know, we, where we see God as he's a, you know, he's a condemning God or he's harsh or he's controlling and all these other opinions of God rather than God doesn't deal with us from, from that negative perspective. Why? Two reasons. One, because of the blood of Jesus. Two, because when we accepted Christ as our Savior, we died. We're dead. That sin nature, that yucky nature, died and went to the cross with Jesus and is no more. You know, the Word says that there's no condemnation to those of us who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit for the law, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. I mean, that's, you know, those are shouting grounds because that's the confirmation that he sees us from the positive and not from the negative. When he taps us on the shoulder, when, you know, and I'll tell you, I'll be, I'm just being real with my family. <laughs> I mean, I go through these things, and I, I wrestle with um, things that come along. It's like, you, you know, why, you, want, you want to just get on your face and say, why? Why? Why did that happen? What good can become of something that's so heinous and horrible? Why would such a thing happen? But what he does is he, he invites us into me see. He invites us into a more intimate fellowship with his heart, with us, because he, he feels our pain. He feels our disappointment. He feels... Everything that we feel, he's, you know, he's there. He, you know, he's, he's Emmanuel. He's God with us. He, his word says he'll never leave or forsake us. He's there. When the, when the bad things happen, he's there. When abuse happens, he's there. When you, when you stick a needle in your arm, he's there. I have a, a print in my office, and the first time I saw it, it was, in, it was like a poster like that, and I burst into tears. The, the uh, artist came over and he said, honey, are you okay? No, <laughs> I have to come back. It was a picture of a young man with a you know bottle of booze, a gun, there was a skull in a small room, cigarette, all this, putting a needle in his arm. And there's a behind him is Jesus, and Jesus had his arm there when that man was shooting. The heroin in his arm. He's there with us in the midst of our storms. He's there with us. And you think, you think, well, gee, how, how come bad things happen to good people? The ultimate question. Why would God let that happen to me? I'm going to change your thinking a little bit. You might not like it. And that is in everything he gives us an opportunity to search out his heart in the matter. 
because his heart for us is always good. You know, he doesn't look at us and say, yo, you know, you're, and, and judge us and condemn us for the things we do. He looks, us, looks at us when he brings something to our attention. He goes, um, that's just a little area where there's a little something missing. It's not a deficit. It's not a, what do they say in 12 steps? Um, it's not deficits. There's another word, but I can't, I can't come up with it right now. Um, shortcomings, you know, it's not, it, it's, I'm, I got off track because I was trying to think of that word. But anyway, <laughs> so Jesus, you know, we, we are called also, and this is sort of a shift here, but um, our, we need to always be focused on who God is for us and who he wants to be for us in a situation. And I kind of am saying that over and over again because I think it's just really important that we get that. Yeah, I remember, you know, there was a time in my life when, um, you know, I, I just... I was a Christian, I was born again, I was baptized in the Holy Ghost, tongue talk and love Jesus. But when I opened my mouth to speak, out of it came things like, ah, my hair, ah, you know. I, everything was negative about my life. I was, you know, I've been divorced and all that, but, you know, I love the Lord. <laughs> so this pastor's wife said to me, she said, I dare you to see yourself through God's eyes. Oh, I mean, that was one of those oh, moments where you just kind of, hmm, ever thought about that before? Well, I'll tell you what, folks, it changed my life because I got a revelation of how he sees me, and I'm forever changed. Um. You know, Jesus has been made, as, made unto us wisdom, revelation, righteousness, and sanctification. So, you know, we're a prophetic church, and, you know, this is a prophetic lifestyle that we live. And so, you know, he foretells our lives for us because he's prophetic. And he shows us how to live in relationship. And he wants us to have these encounters with him, and he wants us to have more encounters, you know, and I, I look at, I remember Mike talking about how he used to put himself in these passages, in these stories, and would just have his own encounter with the Lord in that. Um, these encounters are life-changing, and they propel us into a deeper understanding of the level of favor that we walk in. You know, like I said, he's not, God's not preoccupied with our sin, but he's eternally invested in our righteousness and our sanctification. There's just, I, you know, I could have written for days on this stuff. It was just so amazing. And I'm sure as you're hearing it, it's kind of resonating with you. You kind of you, you know, you feel it. You're just like, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's because of the favor that you have already. So there's a familiarity with what's being said because it's who you are. <laughs> um, stronger in your weakness in God. We are stronger in our weakness in God than our strongest moment standing in the authority of our anointing. Take that one in. That's pretty cool. When God's passion for you takes a hold of your heart, you know, we become passionate for him. After God's own heart like David. <laughs> and in our devotional time, our presence time, he teaches us how to be with him and he shows us favor. And, you know, I was thinking about this, uh, you know, the prophecies for other people because of, 
you know, the favor that we carry. We, we get, we get to prophesy and to speak God's heart into the lives of people who are hurting and damaged and, and hopeless. So much hopelessness. And we get, we get, because of what God has given us, the favor and the, and the prophetic gift that he's given us, we get to speak favor into the hearts of other people. Where's your devotional relationship with the Lord? And what does favor look like in your life? Now, favor is for now not in the, you know, not down the pike. See, and I, belo- I, and I think we can all agree, you know, we're, we are in a time, in a season, where I believe that the Lord is about, he's unleashing favor on us. Favor for ourselves, but favor for other people. Nothing missing, nothing broken. That's his heart. So he wants us, you know, he wants us all cleaned up, and he wants a, our vessel full and leaking for other people because we have an assignment. We have a f- flavored favor that is uniquely yours for this season for other people. You know, in, in um, identity, you know, we're t- he's talking about our identity, about who we are. And um, I, I confess that I have been pretty lax in praying into the prophetic words that have been spoken over my life. I, I still have them. You know, I still, um, but I, up until now, I, I don't think that I really prayed into them because some of the words spoken, I'm like, yeah, right. Sure, you know, I have, you know, I, I just, it's like that, you know, they must be inaccurate. But who am I to say that? Who am I to say that? Who am I? So every prophetic word that's ever been spoken over you, that's part of your identity because God's using prophetic warriors to speak your destiny, your identity, and his favor into your life. You know, he's such a great provider. And, you know, Psalm 44, 3, just read that because that's his good pleasure to give us. You know, houses we don't build, vineyards we don't plant, and wells we don't dig. Always attached to your favor or your identity will be favor. What God's called you to do, favor comes with it. And, you know, I'm going to talk about identities, too, because um, we have, I mean, you guys, some of you have been given many mantles. You know, you've been given a lot of word about who you are, and there's different words. And that's why in this word that the Lord gave me, he said, don't take it lightly. He really, you know, kind of got my attention on that. He sets us free and he anoints us with his favor to help set other captives free. You know, and our identity is always going to be who we are regardless of whether we step in it to, or not. But don't you want to step into all the identities that God has and all the mantles that he has for us? Yeah. <clears throat> Even though we may not be walking in the fullness of it in, in all the areas of our life. Um, doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. And um, so we, it's, it's in the knowing and it's in the getting to know. Um, you know, when Jesus 
was on his way, you know, they came and said, oh, Lazarus, Lazarus, he's died, he's, you know, and they, and we're, they were mourning and screaming and yelling, and, you know, he wasn't on his way to raise Lazarus from the dead saying, Father, you know, Father, I, I just give, you know, I pray for your anointing to heal Lazarus. No. Jesus knew exactly who he was. He didn't have a problem with his identity. No crisis. No doubt. No, you know, I wonder if I should be. No. He had moved. He was, you know, had, he was proclaiming his identity. And that's what he calls us to do, to proclaim our identity. It's not an arrogance. It's not pride. It's, an, it's honoring what Father has given us. It's honoring that anointing, that flavored favor. <laughs> Yeah, we are, you know, the Bible says that we, our highest goal is to be like him. And he says that we're joint heirs with Jesus. Heirs, and I, and, and I believe and I say it and I declare it, that we're heirs to a double portion of favor. Because Father gave everything to Jesus. And Jesus. And what he gave to Jesus is ours. And Father gave us to Jesus. So I think in that mix somewhere is a double portion. I receive it anyway. You belong to Christ. Christ belongs to the Father. All things belong to the Father. He has given to Jesus all things. Um, and those things are automatically in mine. And the one passage that I mentioned earlier was kind of one of the passages I used to pray a lot, and that was that I would grow in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. So the testing comes. The testing's going to come. So when the test comes, we get to rest. Because when the testing and the trials come, we get to run into daddy's arms and just be a child. And the truth of the matter is, it really ticks the enemy off. He doesn't know what to do with it. So, he puts us in these uh, situations in order for us to see the depths of his love. We find his purpose in everything as we press into his heart on any matter. We partner with him in prayer. And we give the Holy Spirit full access to our heart. And so uh, I talked about capacity. So what does this do? So I thought capacity was going to be like what happens to your brain when, you know, you um, take a positive memory and juxtapose the positive memory over the negative and dendrites and all that stuff. But no, that's not where he headed on that one. It is an ability, capacity in the process and in the journey builds in us um, the strength the stamina, the fortitude to go and do in rest and peace. That in the middle of your darkest hour, favor says, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So, and so what ends, the, the byproduct of that is that when we go through that storm, it enlarges our heart for other people. You know? God loves us in our mess. 
He favors us even in our mess. He's not going to clean it up for us, but he favors us in our process. And all he wants us to do is to come and say, Daddy, who do you want to be for me in this situation? And how can I partner with you in prayer? So, trials, temptations, all of that come from a place of rest. We get to live successfully from his heart. And we get to fulfill all of our identities from the place of rest in his heart. So what I want to do now is I, I want to just declare some things over you. And then we're going to do some proclamations. Actually, you know what? I'd like you guys... I'd like you guys to repeat after me. We'll do a, we'll do a little mini sozo here. <laughs> All right. So I want you to say, in the name of Jesus, I renounce fear. I renounce all unbelief. And I renounce every doubt or doubt in every form. And I take authority over not feeling worthy, not feeling loved, every abuse that ever happened in my life, every cruel thing that has ever happened to me, everything that's ever been spoken over my life, And that I have to perform to earn my favor. I rejoice that I am accepted in the beloved. I am his favorite. I am his favorite. I am his favorite. Y'all aren't saying it like you mean it. <laughs> I'm highly favored because of who he is. Has nothing to do with what I've done. And I do feel his emotions for me. I am fully alive in Jesus. I have abundant favor for me and others. So, you know, in our, in our time of uh, being in the presence of the Lord, you know, often we, you know, it's petition, 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 petition. Well, tonight we get to set aside petition and begin to proclaim. And I really believe that we're in this season now of proclamation proclamation that it, that proclamation along with everything else has been spoken tonight spoken becomes our lifestyle that we're you know yes there's a there's room for a petition obviously but i really believe that the lord is pouring out identities on each one of us and it's time to proclaim what he's giving us so I want you guys to repeat after me some proclamations. Thank you, Lord, that the Holy Spirit is brooding over me. I thank you that the old man has passed away and all things are new. Thank you that the window of heaven, heaven, I've done that twice tonight, heaven is open for me. And I receive the double portion because of who Father is and who I am in Christ Jesus. 
I am okay. I don't know what I just wrote there, so we're going to skip that and go to Psalm 102.13. You will arise and have mercy on me, God. Um, you will... Oh, dear, I can't see, so that's not good. Sorry, folks. <laughs> you will get up from your throne and help me, Father. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> the time of your compassion and help is now. I declare that my dreams and desires are from you, Lord. Every prophetic promise and every dream, every vision, I believe I receive it tonight for my life and the lives of others. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. Um, so I guess we could, if anybody, you know, um, we could put some music on. I guess we, if there's not a musician up there. So um, if anybody would like some prayer, you know, we have our, um, our intercessors that can come up and um, just offer prayer for anybody. Um, but that's it for tonight, and thank you very much.